So hi and welcome back on my channel to this brand new video. Now today I have a little bit of an unusual video for you because I won't program anything inside of the EDS or in Home Assistant but instead I want to discuss a really important topic together with you. And you already read it in the video description or the title. The topic is, is KNX outdated? Do we need a KNX 2.0? Where do I come to that or why do I even ask this question? Well, that's because I oftentimes read it in comments, especially also on my German channel where yeah, I have a little bit of more comments under my videos. And there I sometimes see comments where it's mentioned that KNX is way too old, KNX is too slow, it needs to be updated, a new system needs to be used, etc. And that's Definitely a valid question, because if you think about it, KNX is more than 30 years old. That's definitely a big time range. And if we think about yeah, update cycles inside of technology, well, that's definitely a long cycle. So do we need a new KNX system? Well, therefore, first of all, we have to specify what outdated means in this context, because that's term outdated can have different, let's say, meanings. Because if we think about consumer electronics, like for example, smartphones, laptops, TVs, etc., then 30 years definitely is a big time range and we would definitely have changed it since then. Because if I think about it, my smartphone, I change every two to four years, or for example, TVs or let's say laptops every five years, at least I would say, so by that standard, we can definitely say that KNX is outdated or is too old and we need a new system. But is this really true when it comes to building automation? And that's where I think that's not true because when I build a new building and I want to use building automation, then I don't want a system that I have to change every two to four years or even every five years. There I want a reliable system that I can install and then use for 20, 30 years, etc. Because I don't want to change my push button sensors, actuators or even the whole programming every, third, every five years. And there the question is not only will the system still work in 20 to 30 years, but there are more questions behind that. Can it still be maintained? So what that means is are there still yeah, persons or companies available that can maintain the system? Are there spare parts or let's say also exchange parts available? For example, if a push button sensor breaks, is it still possible to install a new push button sensor or at least is it still possible to get spare parts? Another topic is, is the software still supported or do I need to have a laptop with an, let's say, 20 year old operating system to have this one software to program my installation. And as I mentioned, are there people still trained to work with the system? And so here you can see outdated really has a big meaning. But let us take that slowly. Therefore, first of all, let us take a quick look at the KNX history. Where does it come from? The KNX bus is based on three systems. The European installation bus, so short form EIB, which you can still see on some devices there the KNX label and the EIB label is printed on. Then the EHS, it stands for European Home Systems and Vatibus. And the idea was back then to get one standard to use so that you don't have multiple standards, everyone cooks their own, yeah, building automation, but you have one standard and this is when KNX was invented or when KNX was really started. So the 30 year history is basically combined KNX and mainly the European installation bus because a lot of technology of the EIB, so European installation bus, was used or is used in KNX and this is why with the EDS it's still possible to program some older devices from the EIB time. And this is already something where you see one big strength in KNX, the backward compatibility. As I mentioned, European installation bus devices can still be programmed with modern 
EDS6 or other versions. So devices or systems that were installed 10, 20, 30 years ago can still be maintained with the old software or with the new software running on modern yeah, laptops, machines, etc. And that's really something where KNX shines. And not only that, but you can also combine old devices together with new devices. So you see there are not only, let's say, spare parts available, but you can also use new parts in your building automation together with old parts and they still will work fine and you can use the same software to program that. So you can see compatibility has always been part of the design philosophy of KNX and this is really something where it shines. Okay, okay, so we have a really good compatibility within KNX. But doesn't that also mean that we still use the very slow KNX twisted pair line? And well, yeah, that's true. The fundamental thing in KNX, that's the KNX twisted pair installation. And we are still running at the same speed with 9600 kilobit per second. And yes, that's not really that fast if you compare it to modern network technologies where you run at speeds like one gigabit per second or even more. Sounds really ancient, right? Well, yeah, but you have to bear in mind that we don't really need that high speeds in KNX, especially on the KNX twisted pair side. Because the data then that is transmitted on the KNX twisted pair side is really tiny. And it's also not the case that the devices are permanently sending data onto the twisted pair bus. Because KNX is event based, so that means that when a event is triggered, like for example, I press the button or the temperature changes, for example, by 5 degrees or 0 0.5 degrees, then a telegram is being sent. And then, yeah, only values are being sent. So true, false, or some analog values. Or when we send text over KNX twisted pair, we only have 14 bytes available. So you can see the data that we transmit in twisted pair isn't really that high. And so therefore, even if KNX twisted pair has a higher speed, it really wouldn't bring that much. And even in large project where you have hundreds or even thousands of devices, that's no problem at all. Because with the right topology, you can sort of bind those devices together that need to communicate with each other. So by the areas or by the lines. So that when I press the push button sensor in the ground floor to also activate the light in the ground floor, that this telegram is not sent to every floor or to every building this KNX installation takes place. So it's not about the speed, but much rather about reliability and stability. And this is something where KNX Twisted Pair is really good at. And not only that, but KNX Twisted Pair is also really easy to install. And KNX is not stuck at KNX Twisted Pair, but it's being developed further. So KNX is not stuck in the past. Nowadays we have, for example, KNX IP, which is in itself already pretty old. It's available, I think, since 2007, 6, something like that. Then nowadays we are talking about KNX IoT, which is based on Thread and IPv6. And for example, also security became a crucial role within KNX due to KNX Secure. And that's not only theory, but uh, last year in November, I was at the Train the Trainers event in Ghent. And there we took a look at the first KNX IoT devices. And what's really yeah, important to know is that a KNX IoT device is basically like every other KNX device. You simply have a different meter type, but the parameterization or the programming still takes place in the EDS and there you barely recognize any difference. And here you can see it still works with old actuators. So the backwards compatibility here shines again. But as the old saying goes, all that glitters is not gold. And that's definitely also true for KNX. KNX has its challenges. The innovation takes time. More than 500 manufacturers need to be aligned to use, let's say, new technologies like, for example, KNX IP or KNX Secure or KNX IoT. And if a new technology is being developed, it's crucial 
in the KNX design philosophy that it's also backward compatible. And that's why innovation definitely takes some time in KNX. I mean, take a look at KNX Secure. It took years before it really gained traction, but nowadays you barely see any new KNX devices being released without KNX Secure. Another challenge in KNX, not only in my opinion, is that the integration effort is really high. Every time you install a new building with KNX, you need to create the group addresses, you need to reinvent the light, so create the group addresses, connect the same group object objects over and over again. But also there, KNX itself has seen this as a challenge and is yeah, showing ways on how to get around with it. So for example, smart linking is in the works. That basically means, I don't want to go into much detail here, but smart linking basically means that I only create the function, let's say light in the living room, and then I can directly connect the push button sensor or the channel of it with the channel of my dimming actuator and the group addresses and also the linking of the group objects is being created automatically without anything I need to do. And if we go further with this KNX semantics, what this is all about, then we can export the KNX project in our visualization server and the visualization server is able to create the visualization on its own without the needs that I have to declare what is the light, what is the heating, etc. So here you can see that the KNX association or KNX itself sees this challenge and is developing a solution for that. But here again, it needs to take some time because the design philosophy, again, we talk about backwards compatibility, more than 500 manufacturers need to implement those new features and so on and so forth. Now, another thing that I quickly want to talk about is if we take a look at new building automation systems like Zigbee, Matter or Z-Wave, we see one common thing and this is that they are all wireless. And it's true that in KNX we have a wireless solution with KNX RF and this is being also expanded now with KNX RF Multi. However, this new system RF Multi is only really interesting for European installations because of the frequency band it is using. However, KNX RF is in my opinion still limited by the number of devices. There are not really that many manufacturers creating KNX RF devices and it's also, yeah, Basically, in my opinion, more commonly used together with a KNX Twisted Pair installation and not really on its own. So as an expansion for the KNX Twisted Pair installation, it's really useful. However, if I only want to have a wireless solution, then KNX RF, in my opinion, still lacks some bits. And I really hope that KNX IoT, for example, can here come into play because Wireless is still a nice solution for retrofits or for example in rented homes where I'm not able to install new wires. Still, my opinion however is that a wired solution is always the better solution if you can do it. Now that we talked about those new protocols, let us take a look at some commonly used protocols in the building automation. Because there we will see that KNX actually isn't that old. So for example, if we take a look at Modbus, Modbus is from the 1980s. It was invented in 1979 and it's still used. And what's really funny is that if you take a look at Google Trends, you'll see that Modbus is trending or is being used more and more. Why is that the case? Well, basically because it's easy to implement for manufacturers, for example, in electric vehicle chargers, in inverters for photovoltaic and many more. And also, for example, the DALI protocol that is oftentimes used in combination with KNX is also from the 90s. So what really matters is not the age of a system or a protocol, but it's important how well it can adapt to modern needs. So for example, in KNX, the security was implemented into the protocol. KNX nowadays supports IP and is also creating a new media type about IoT. 
And for example, you also have gateways available in KNX to import or to combine those new protocols to it, like meta gateways, MQTT and many, many more. So in my opinion, if it comes to some final thoughts, is KNX outdated? No, definitely not. Yes, there are some pain points, like for example, the innovation, which simply needs time, but that's yeah, obvious because so many manufacturers use KNX nowadays, or also the long setup times. But KNX is aware of it and is yeah, still innovating. And besides that, KNX still offers unmatched stability, long-term compatibility, flexibility, and also this huge amount of manufacturers that you can choose from. So in my opinion, it's absolutely still the state-of-art system for building automation projects. So what's your take on KNX? Outdated or not? Drop your thoughts down below in the comment section. I really enjoy reading those comments, so definitely do that. And if you want to dive deeper into KNX, then check out my other videos, or even better, check out my video courses over on Udemy. There are dedicated video courses on the topics of KNX, KNX and Home Assistant and many more. I have linked it also in the video description, also with a little coupon code, so that you can get the courses a little bit cheaper. So. And with that, I would say that's it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel to not miss any new videos. And with that, I would say bye bye and I see you in the next video.